and you can ask questions and we can continue to talk and I can walk you through some things. Throughout the day, if you drop any pictures or have questions or want help with something or advice, you can go ahead and add those to the chat channel. I can look at your picture and give you advice on adjustments that you might want to make or some changes. This is a very basic entry level class. We're not going to cover things like composition or um, color schemes or anything like that. You don't need that for miniature photography. <clears throat> We're also not going to cover taking pictures outside of our miniatures. I know I've seen people talk about do your miniature pictures outside. They take the best pictures. Um, that's not necessarily the case. And we're not going to talk about that today. We're going to do all inside. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is who I am. And then we're going to get, get into um, what the setup is. So I am a photographer, but that's not my primary source of income. I work as a web content manager for a nonprofit and I do that part-time. Um, the photography side of what I do is really a hobby and I've been doing it for years and I love it. <clears throat> so I've learned a lot about it and I'm very into the technical aspects of it along with the artistic side. So I have a lot of experience with, with making a balance between those things. Um, I do have a personal website where I set up and do professional headshots for people who have social media accounts and small businesses, but lately I haven't been doing much of that because of the, the state of, um, or the conditions that we're living in. I've really restricted myself to being at home. I have done travel and landscape photography, but not for profit. I have sold big images that I made, um, at charity auctions and they do pretty well. So that's how I get into it. It's more of a hobby for me than a job. I like doing this. So I, any questions? All right, we should be good. Now to get started, I just want to show you guys what we're going to use. I have a window that is directly behind the video camera. And all it is is just a big window in my house and it's just letting light in. And I use that window for photography because it has good light. If the light is too strong, like on a bright sunny day, I'll just drop the blinds over it and let them be closed because I don't want that bright, bright, strong light coming in. It will make the shadows and highlights on the miniature too bright and too dark. And that kind of messes up your what you painted to be shadows and highlights. And I know some people have probably taken photos and noticed that where the highlight point is just so bright and white and it's not how you intended it to look. So you want to bring down and soften the light levels and that's why I use a big window. You can also use a lamp or an LED light. Just make sure you put something between the window or the lamp and your image subject so that it filters the light and spreads it out. It could be something like a shower curtain that's white or a uh, sheer curtain that's white or even an old white t-shirt. Um, just don't set it directly on the lamp bulb because you can start a fire and that would be bad. Okay, so now I'm gonna move around a lot. <clears throat> this is my table and I'm going to adjust the camera. Okay. This is just a cheap little TV tray type table. Um, it breaks down, I move it around. That means that any window in the house that I wanna use, depending on the time of day, I can use. So it's just super portable. You could use any kind of chair or anything that you wanna roll around or set up. Um, that's perfect. So I bring that out and I set it fairly close to the window, but like not right directly in front of it because I don't want the bright light on it. I want it to be slightly shaded or filtered. Turn off the overhead lights. They can skew the color of your overall image. And um, you don't want to do that because then the overhead lights can make your image look way too yellow or way too blue, depending on what kind of lights are installed. And you don't want it to affect the colors that you actually painted your miniature. So I use the table. 
and then I get an old background or piece of foam corn. I set that up at one end of the table, farthest away from the light. This is just a piece of uh, cruddy black foam core that I airbrush tested colors on. Um, and it actually looks kind of cool in the picture, I think. It was completely un unintentional. And then because I'm using a black background, I'll take my black, it's like a plinth, we'll call it a plinth, and set that close to my light source. I'm going to set the miniature up on that. Yep, I'm gonna place my background so it's about, the bottom of the background is about even with the top of the plinth in the image. The reason we use this is because when we take the photograph, we want to take the photograph straight on to the miniature that we're going to use. And we want to make sure that we're not getting the table that's on the bottom in the picture. This makes it super simple so you don't have to worry about putting a paper down here on this surface or another board. You don't have to play with those seamless paper backgrounds or cloths. It's literally one piece of foam core and like this little candle holder or a food container or something. So let's see who are we gonna use. We're gonna use Angelica. So we'll put her here on the plinth just like that. And sometimes I don't have enough light coming in. So I'll just put these other white boards in here. Let's see if I can get that to stand up. Yeah, to help reflect a bit of additional light in around my miniature to create kind of like a light tunnel. This is not gonna work with it, eh? Okay, there we go. We're gonna make it work. This is photography on a budget. Boom, we got it. Okay, so that's the setup. And I think that's super easy. Anybody have any questions about just setting it up? So, okay. The white panels are just adding a little extra light in from the side. I use them because they ref they're white and they reflect light, even small amounts of light, and they just help even out and brighten the light surrounding the miniature. Almost like, I, I know you've seen people use light boxes to take pictures um, of the miniatures, but they can be a little pricey, they're fiddly, they can get, you have to store them and they can get destroyed by your dog. And that sucks. <laughs> if my dog eats the, the foam core, I'm not so worried about it. Um, I would not use black. It will not reflect. If you want to make your image look very dark and you want to subtract some of the light because there's too much light, um, you're going to you're gonna want to use the black. But otherwise, I would use white. Yes, you can use a white background. I'm, I'm going to do some demos with the black and then I'll switch to white. I just, um, personally, I like the back, black background and that's what I usually use on my Instagram feed. But sometimes I use white, especially if I have a particularly dark um, miniature and I really, really wanna show it. Okay. Ooh, if you're using the skylights um, overhead, it's gonna to put too much light from the top down. You wanna have um, light right directly in front of your miniature. Even if you have to put a lamp in, don't put it to the side. It needs to be directly in front of your miniature facing your miniature. That's gonna give you the best um, look. That was our first 10 minutes, okay. If you wanna create different effects, you can change around the areas where your light is, but um, 
front light is going to be the best, especially when you're starting out. If you don't have good natural light, just use a lamp. It's okay. Like I said, if you're using a lamp, um, just filter it. Put a screen or a t-shirt or even some paper in front of it. Just don't make sure it's not directly touching the bulb. Ooh, if you have clear acrylic or raisin, you, resin, you want to use a lighter background and you want to probably get some light in from behind as well. That's going to be an advanced topic, but if you light the miniature from behind, it's really going to make that clear pop. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start this share screen. Give me a second here. Okay. I'm opening my Lightroom app. Can everybody see that okay? It took my chat window away. They're saying yes, yeah. they can see it. Okay, great, I'm putting this back up. Okay. Now we're going to get started. This is the Lightroom app, and this is the window you're going to start with on this app usually. Sometimes it might just pull up your pictures. If you're opening it for the first time, it's going to pull up tips and tricks and ask you if you want to do some tutorials. For today, you can go ahead and um, skip that. We don't need that. Okay. So um, the first thing you're going to do is click the camera button in the bottom right hand corner that brings up your camera screen and then up here in the top left you are going to set it to DNG format. DNG format lets us get the most benefit out of the camera format so that we can get a nice good clean white balance edit later. So DNG format and then turn your flash off. Make sure it's your rear facing camera. The rear facing camera on most mobile devices is gonna be your better camera. Okay, then at the top right there are three little dots. Go ahead and open that up. Turn on the timer to two seconds. Anybody have questions about why we're going to use the timer? Let me explain. Okay, we're going to use the timer because it's really hard to hold a phone still when taking the picture. The timer lets us support it better, gives us time to make sure that we've got good tight support on it before it actually takes the picture. If you wiggle the phone around during the picture, it's going to cause a blurry picture and you don't want that. This is especially helpful if you're using a tripod because the tripod will let you go down really, really low in your shutter speed. And if you have the timer, you can click the timer, which might make the phone jiggle just a little, but then you can, it will have time to settle and stop. So you'll get a good, clean, crisp picture. So we use the timer function. The rest of these, you don't really have to worry about it this time. This is a basics class. We're not gonna get into that. In the bottom left, you're gonna go to Click this drop down and you're going to hit professional. We don't need high dynamic range and we don't need automatic. We're going to use professional. Everybody catch up. It just depends on how you want to set it up. You don't, it doesn't matter if it's horizontal or anything like that. Hey Scott, um, it's DNG. So I click the top center of the screen and it should give me options between DNG and JPG. If you don't have that option, just go with what it gives you. The grid is also when you click the three dots, there is, do you see where I'm clicking grid level? The grid helps you line it up and make sure everything's nice and straight. Um, it's not necessary, it's just personal preference. Okay, now if everybody has, I'm sorry, Tom, the app is Lightroom. It's free. 
I'm using an, uh, I have an iPhone. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. I know Lightroom does come on Android. I just don't have an Android. Everybody should have access to the pro settings. Okay. Now that we're on this, all right. So now we're gonna talk about the pro settings at the bottom. You have exposure adjustments. We're not, we're not gonna mess with exposure um, compensation. We don't need that today. Where it says SEC, that is seconds. And um, <clears throat> that is your shutter speed. You can adjust that for right now, if you're using window light, I would go as low as you can, um, not to go below one, one twenty-fifth of a second, which is usually we would call that shutter speed 125. Um, if you're on a tripod, you can go lower. Um, and then we have ISO. I would not make sure that is not on auto because auto ISO will change your ISO to very high levels. And this is the setting that will cause your photos to look very grainy and almost kind of blotchy. It will add a textured type effect to your photos. Okay, Scott. Um, Scott, can you see the screen share? SS should be the same, shutter speed. Okay, do you have at the bottom of the screen where it has this pro setting, I'm clicking it now. Can you, do you have something like that where you can change that? He said, or David says the three dots are on the lower right. Yeah, on, on the Android, it's SS. I'm going to get to that in just a second, Jesse. Okay. When we take the pictures, I want to leave the white balance. That's this setting here. Just leave it on auto. Don't mess with it. And this other one, this is your focus. We're just going to leave that on auto for now. Um, there are more advanced settings and we're not going to cover those today. So I am starting at 1 1 25th of a second for my shutter speed and ISO 100. I'm starting at that point because it's just an easy starting point. And that's going to let me see what my picture looks like. After I take the picture, I'm going to look at it and then make those adjustments based on, or make adjustments to those settings based on how dark or how bright my picture is. So now I'm going to move into position. I have it all set up. I'm going to move into position. I want to make sure that I'm framing my image so that my miniature is at about eye level with the actual camera. I want her to be straight on. Um, that would be perfectly straight. We're going to put her in the center and about like this. You don't want to tilt your camera too much. You want to try and get it level. Then I'm going to hold it as still as I can. I'm going to click on the girl or the, the miniature and you're going to get a little box like that. That's where it's telling the camera to focus. I'm going to hit the button. Wait two seconds and it takes a picture. Then you can click on a little image of the picture and you can see what comes up. Um, it won't let you stretch or drag or do anything like that, but you can see it's, it's pretty well lit. Um, with my basic settings, I, I don't see anything too bright or too dark, and I think we're pretty good. In fact, it's so well lit, I think I can go down on my ISO to, let's try that, about 65 or so. Okay. I'm going to try that again. 
click the girl. And take a look. And I think that looks pretty good. You can see the image is a little darker. Yes, Chad, you want the lens even with the mini. That gives you the best um, appearance. So the image you can see looks a little dark, but we're going to fix that. <clears throat> so now that I've taken this picture, I can hit edit. No, not edit. I'm sorry, it's already got the edit menu up. Okay, let's take one more picture with the light background. And then I'm gonna show you how to edit in the last 10 minutes of class. After this, I know there's still a lot of questions. I, I will be in the Discord channel. Um, and I'll be able to answer more questions in Discord and help you all out. Um, people can share images with me if you wanna get advice on things maybe that you feel like you wanna learn how to change some things or get better at it. Or just advice on maybe some adjustments that you could be doing. Okay, this is with the white background. And I'll pull her a little forward. And now you see what she looks like with that white background. Not bad. All right. Yes, Glenn, I am giving everybody a PDF at the end of the class that will let you, will explain everything that we've gone over. Okay, David, I will have to work with you on this. I don't, Christina, I leave the settings the same but you can see how much lighter it looks with the same settings. Okay. Now that we have our picture, we're gonna talk about how we're gonna edit it. And this is where we're already gonna talk about um, ethical editing, which is kind of a tough subject. I can go through here on my photo and adjust things like the exposure to make it brighter and the shadows zoom in to make sure that everything is evenly lit. I don't want to make too many adjustments because that changes the actual look of the miniature. And if you painted your miniature in a way that you've got the saturation just the way you want and you put highlights and shadows in the places that you want and you used um, a level of brightness or darkness, if you're changing that in an app like this for your final photo, you're not, you're no longer showing people your actual artwork. You're showing them a photo that you're able to edit. However, because cameras don't capture light the way that our eyes do, it is okay to make a few adjustments to increase the brightness or um, bring up the shadows or sometimes bring down the highlights a little bit on the photo to get a better representation of what the miniature actually looks like. You can also go to color and adjust your white balance. So if you're using a lamp and your photo looks awfully yellow or awfully blue and it doesn't look quite how it's supposed to look to the eye, you can slide this temperature slider just a little. Um, I'm not going to mess with it because I think it looks fine. If your colors are looking really desaturated, you might have too much light on your miniature and you might try to um, bring the light levels down just a little bit. You can't, I wouldn't mess with any of the effects here. Sometimes it auto sets things. You don't need any of those. Um, this vignette will make, is okay a little bit. It'll brighten or darken the edges. That's not really hurting anything, just don't go overboard. 
detail is adding sharpness to your photo. And this is kind of important. If you're going to add a little sharpness and that's okay, click this masking option and drag that up to about 90 or even a little higher. That way it's not sharpening every single pixel in your photo, but just the edges. Oh, Christina. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know what it would be at on the Android. It's not that big of a deal if you don't have it, it's not super important. Um, the rest of these like noise reduction, I would leave alone. And then finally, we'll go to crop and crop is where you can change all kinds of fun things about your miniature and the way you're expressing it. This way you can zoom in on your miniature more and cut out some of the background. Um, you can change the crop sizes. I'm clicking the bottom left here. Um, a lot of times for my miniatures, I like to use a square crop because I'm going to post it to social media and it actually plays the nicest with things like Instagram. So we could go square and then drag up. Um, you can offset your miniature a little, which might give them an added personality or show off their pose because it's leaning a certain direction. I like to leave a bit of white space around it. I think it looks nice. So this is about how I would crop this miniature. And this photo was done with the phone. Masking, okay. Oh no, Cindy. <laughs> if you're getting a black square, you probably don't have enough light. <laughs> I don't know what your setup's like. Um, This is done completely with a phone and a window and some phone core. <laughs> That's pretty easy. And you know, I can show you a picture of what my what my um, window looks like here in just a minute. Um, so this is how I would crop this miniature. I think it looks pretty good for a phone picture and I didn't even have a tri tripod. And as you can see, the background almost looks like I took it with a light box and I didn't. So then you're gonna to go to, we're gonna talk about saving before I run out of time here in the next two minutes. To save, you can hit the export button. It's the same pretty much with everything. Yep, yeah, thank you, Sob, for answering that. To save this, I always go to export as here at the bottom because then you can change to small for things like Instagram or Facebook because they're going to shrink your images anyway. Or if you're submitting for a contest, you can use largest dimensions available. Masking was under details and sharpening, Chad. The masking is just for the sharpening. Um, I use 100% image quality go to more options. And then I would change the name to a custom name. Hit the back arrow and then the checkbox at the top of the screen and it will let you save out your miniature. You can just save it right to your camera roll from there. And it will stay in your library of Lightroom photos. This one I can also edit, it's a little dark. and then she's done. I think it looks good. Okay. 
And that's the end. But I will answer these last couple questions real quick and then we can move over to the Discord channel. That's correct, Timothy. The raw pictures are still in your library. They should be in your Lightroom library as DNG. It should be a non-destructive editing. I'm sorry, David. I'm going to help you out, man. Let me also drop this link into chat. There is a download link for the book that I typed up for everybody. Go ahead and grab that if you can. I will be in the channel. If you missed it, let me know and I will um, help you get a hold of it. I hope it really does help everybody take nicer pictures. <laughs> 